And welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Sony 200 to 600 millimeters f5.6 to 6.3. It's a lens that has built itself an incredibly good reputation among wildlife and bird pho photographers because uh, because of its image quality, because of its flexibility, because of the results that it gets. Well, we're also going to compare this lens to the Fujifilm 150 to 600 f5.6 to uh, 8 which uh, is a comparable lens to some extent. And the reason for this comparison is that uh, basically they both sit in the same price range. They're, they both sit below the $2,000 mark and they both also uh, aim that enthusiast wildlife photographer, although they're plenty capable of producing professional re results. But before doing all of that, let me thank Erecia Photo, which is the biggest used market in Italy, which also has different, uh, different stores around Europe, because thanks to them, I was able to test out the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter. On the other hand, the 150 to 600 that you see at my, behind my back, uh, it's mine and I've been using it for uh, more than a year. So without any further ado, let's go talk about the 200 to 600 first, and then we're gonna compare it to the 150 to 600. Now, a little bit of background on the tests that I've done on the 200-600 millimeters and what this video is going to be. This is not going to be a super technical review. There's plenty of them around the internet. It would make no sense to go redo what others have done, pr probably better than me, uh, back when the lens was was out. So I'm going to tell you what was my experience with the 200-600 using it with the Sony A7R5 which, as you probably know, it's not the best camera when it comes to wildlife. Now, enough about the camera, let's talk about the lens. So let me start with the things that I don't like first. To begin with, the lens is white. I hate those white lenses. Even the Fuji behind my back is not really white, it's kind of a silverish thing. That is better, there's a reason why they're white. They want to reflect uh, the uh, light of the sun to prevent uh, heat to get inside the lens and then giving you a crappy result because of the heat that generates inside the lens. Still, I would have preferred them to be black. But you can always put like some camouflage, something on top of it, not to show that it's this white. The lens is heavier than I'm used to, and we're gonna talk about that when we compare it with, with the Fuji. Uh, not that it's unusable, but it's pretty hefty. And last, the last bit of things that I didn't like is that the tripod foot, which is removable, it's not Arca Swiss com compatible. I'm used to that with the Fujifilm gear that I have, and that is a convenience thing that I, I don't, I'm not saying it's gonna make a big difference, but it's one thing less that you need to think about when, you, when you're going out. Outside of that, however, there's not much to complain about the lens. The lens is super fast when it comes to autofocusing. It's really fast and not only fast, it's very, very, very accurate. Now, don't trust those that are gonna tell you that you get 100% hit rate with Sony. That is not true. Still, you get much better hit rate than with other systems. From a usability standpoint, the zoom is the zoom throw is pretty short, so you can easily move it with two fingers as you uh, as you're um, moving the lens. It's pretty easy to zoom in and zoom zoom out. That they makes it they makes a huge difference when it comes to uh, the usability of the zoom because sometimes when you have to those zoom when you have to remove your hands, change the way you're handling the lens and, and stuff like like that, it's gonna distract you from what you're doing. With this one, with two fingers, you're gonna move the lens. You're gonna move the zoom, and it's not gonna be, it's not gonna get in the way at all. The function buttons are positioned in a very uh, easy position to reach. Very, it makes a lot of sense, and they're easy to use. There's plenty of controls. You have the autofocus, monofocus switch. You have the focus limiter. You have the uh, on and off for the optical steady sub optical steady shot, and you also have three different options for the optical steady shot. Those as well are pretty conveniently located. They're pretty easy to use and pretty easy to to reach. The aperture on this lens is really good because having a zoom that is 5.6 to 6.3 at 600 millimeter uh, is uh, pretty. It's a pretty. It's a pretty good thing. Usually you get uh, darker lenses. Despite not being a, a macro lens, you can get some clo close up, and the lens is fairly sharp even at its minimum fo focusing range. And especially if you use the APC mode on a high megapixel camera, you can get a pretty good 
mag magnification out, out of it. Of course, again, it's not a macro lens, but still, it is usable for those things. From an image quality standpoint, this lens is basically exceptional. It's very sharp, wide open, even wide, wide open, and you use these lenses wide open for the most part, so it better be very sharp when it's wide, wide open. Even in wide open, you don't have that many chromatic aberration. I already mentioned the sharpness, the bokeh is uh, really, really good. So overall, the image quality that you get out of it, considering the fact that the lens focuses pretty accurately, uh, it's, it's, again, exceptional. But you know what? A little less conversation, a little more action. Let me show you a few pictures that I was able to get with this lens and then we'll come back and keep talking about it. Now, they were not super spectacular images, let's be honest. But there's two reasons for that. One, I am not a very good wildlife ph photographer. I like doing it, but I'm not very good at it. Two, wildlife seemed to be on leave while I was going after them during this, this lens test. It wasn't easy to find, um, to find wildlife around and they were pretty shy, so I didn't get to get very close to them and to a lot of them. Still, I was able to get a couple of good shots that I'm, well, I'm definitely happy with. And, and I'm pretty satisfied with the, with the results I got. For having, it lens, for having the lens for a couple of weeks, I could definitely get more out of it. But sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. You get uh, busy with stuff that you didn't plan to get busy with. And so I had to get what I could. Again, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna now show you uh, a shot that it's a crappy shot, but for me, it's got a personally a very good value uh, because it's the first time that I was able to capture a kingfisher in a picture. Again, crappy picture. I'm photographing the butt of the kingfisher, but uh, for me, it was the first time. And the reason why I'm showing you the picture is that um, even though I had to help the lens focusing on the kingfisher because I had to select the small uh, focusing point and move it on the kingfisher, still the camera was able to focus this, uh, despite the, the kingfisher being really small and it didn't get confused with the background. This is something that it's very helpful and it's something that is worth uh, mentioning because that makes a difference sometimes between getting the shot and not getting the shot. Again, crappy shot. I'm not saying this was a great shot, but if it could be a great shot, I would have been helped by the autofocus of the lens. So all in all, even on a 61 megapixel sensor, this lens was capable of delivering pretty impressive results. The Fujifilm 150 to 600 is the lens that I've used in the last year or so when it comes to my wildlife photography. And I freaking love that lens for a couple of reasons. One, the image quality that I get out of that lens when it gets the focus right, it's spectacular. It is really spectacular. And two, the lens is very easy to handle, uh, handheld, because it's very lightweight for the size that it has. When you, when you take it in your hands, it looks like you should be feeling 
much higher weight, but then you put it on your camera and it feels like you almost don't feel any weight. So it's a matter of, I think, balance and weight itself, but we're gonna talk about that in a second when we compare it to the Sony uh, 200 to, to 600. Before doing that, let me show you a quick uh, slideshow, the picture that I was able to take with this lens, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. Now, those shots from a professional wildlife photographer standpoint are nothing crazy. They're a pretty ordinary shot, and they are. Again, I'm not a professional wildlife photographer. It would be silly to expect me to bring you spectacular stuff in that regard. But for me, and I believe for what uh, an amateur wildlife photographer or an enthusiast wildlife photographer um, can expect, those turned out pretty, pretty, pretty good. Now let's compare these two lenses and let me tell you one thing, there's pretty visible differences in some areas, differences that may sway the decision toward one system or the other and that's what I want to talk about because for the rest these lenses are exceptionally good anyway. So uh, I'm gonna focus on what differentiates them and why you should choose one over the other, so one system over the other. Starting with the Fujifilm lens, uh, that lens's advantages are related to the portability. Now, from a size standpoint, the lens is very similar to the Sony, at least in length. You can, you can hardly tell the difference. However, where you can see the difference is in the weight more than anything else. The Fujifilm lens is more than 500 grams uh, lighter than the Sony, and you can definitely tell. It's also, I guess, fact of a balance, the Fujifilm lens is better balanced, you definitely don't feel it in your hands as much as you feel the Sony, and it's something that makes a difference when you want to use your lens handheld. And also, the diameter of the lens is pretty different. There's a, uh, there's a drawback in that, and we'll talk about that in a second, but that means that with the Fuji, you have an 82 millimeter front filter uh, thread, while with the Sony you have a 95. Now, aside from the room that this uh, takes in your backpack, there's also an impact on the price of the filter that you're going to buy if you're ever going to use them uh, for these lenses, because 95 millimeter filters are way more expensive than 82 millimeter filters. On top of that, if you want to use filters, while the Fujifilm lens has the little window that you can open in the uh, lens hood to operate, let's just say, your uh, Sucura polarizing filter, with the Sony, you don't have that luxury. The, the hood doesn't have a window, so you just have to remove the hood and move your uh, polarizing filter, and then eventually put the, put the hoods on, hood on again. So, uh, much more convenient on the Fuji side than it is on the Sony side. As already mentioned, the tripod foot on the Fuji is Arca Swiss, while the Sony isn't, and that is a convenience thing that it's not gonna sway your decision, you're not gonna choose a lens based on the tripod foot, but knowing that you don't have to remember of bringing an Arca Swiss plate for your tripod is something that sometimes is going to save your life because if you forget that, you're not going to be using your monopod or your tripod. 
with Fujifilm, this is in general, but specifically for wildlife, being an APAC system, uh, you get a couple of advantages inherent to the size of the sensor and uh, may come in handy when it comes to wildlife. The 150 to 600 basically becomes a 225 to 900 f5.6 to f8. And now, guys, don't talk me. Don't talk to me about the uh, field of view, the depth of field equivalence. When it comes to light gathering, these six, the f5.6 f remains f5.6. The f8 remains f8. It's not going to become f11 or f8, depending on um, which fo focal length you, you're looking at. So don't come in the comment and tell me that no, the equivalence is one stop and uh, something more than no. It's not true. When it comes to wildlife, especially uh, the light gathering matters a lot more than the depth of field. And the fact that the lens basically crops in allows you to get a better magnification ratio just because the lens uses the center portion of it. So you get a better mag magnification out of the Fuji lens on a Fuji camera than you get out of the Sony on a full frame camera. If you use the APC crop mode, they're pretty comparable, although the Fuji still gets a little bit more, a little bit closer than the Sony. Last but not least, uh, and some may argue this is not an advantage, but you can use with this with the Fuji, you can use a camera such as the X-H2S, which was built to be fast and uh, support any type of action photography, and wildlife is part, part of that. You get access to 40 frames per second burst, you get access to pre-shooting, you get access to a stacked sensor, you get access to a lot of good, good things on a body that costs you less than $2,500. In Sony, to get all of that, you get to spend three, almost three times as much. So uh, I know there's some issues with the X-H2S right now, and even when they fix them, probably then it's not gonna get the same autofocus that Sony has, but still, you get access to a more affordable system that is supposed to support you easily with this type of, this type of shots. When it comes to the Sony lens, this lens has a few advantages that definitely can make the difference. Let's start with the aperture. The lens is f5.6 to f6.3. So on the telephoto end is a uh, two thirds of a stop faster than uh, the Fuji lens. Now, of course, one may say, yeah, but you should compare it to the Fuji 100 to 400, and that is an a 4.5 to 5.6, so there's an advantage on the Fuji side. But I believe the right comparison is still with the 150 to 600 for the way the lenses are built, for the uh, overall approach of the lenses, these should be compared, not with the 100 to 400. So having two thirds of a stop of advantage when on the aperture makes a lot of a difference because that means you basically can double your shutter speed or uh, choose a lower ISO value to get the same shot. Pair that with the fact that with the same settings, what I realized is that the Fujifilm, uh, the Fujifilm shot comes out a little bit darker. That means you basically have at least a full stop, if not even more of advantage. That means also that you can use a uh, teleconverter with ease, while with Fuji, starting when you are at 600 millimeters, you're already at f8. If you put a 1.4, you go to f11, and that changes a lot compared to f9. So. That is a big advantage, it shouldn't be overlooked at all. Of course, the other advantage is the autofocus, because let's face it, although I just mentioned that it's not 100% hit with uh, Sony, but it's definitely far better than you get with Fuji. Now, we all know that the Fuji uh, autofocusing, uh, continuous autofocusing is kind of broken right now, so I'm expecting a big bump up once they've released the firmwares in November. But even with the most optimistic version of myself, knows that for as good as they can get it, 
it's probably not going to get close to what Sony can do when it comes to uh, tracking autofocus. Especially, that's where I saw the biggest of the difference, when you have uh, birds in flight that are very close. In that case, I realized that the Sony's autofocus is not faster, but it's much more accurate. And that is even before uh, Fujifilm kind of broke the autofocus in their camera. So they're gonna probably fix it, but it's not gonna be as good. So you get that type of advantage. From a usability standpoint, the function buttons on the side are far more usable than that on the Fuji because you can use them even if you reverse your hood, while with the Fuji, you just need to, to have your hood deployed or removed completely from the lens. Otherwise, you will not have access to those function buttons that are usually used to bring the focus back to the minimum fo focusing distance so that if there's my subject gets lost because it's too close or it's very close and the focus gets stuck in the background, I can easily bring it back and then focus on the subject. That is a very useful function. It's easier to reach on the Sony lens than it is on the Fuji. And in general, what the big advantage that you have with the Sony uh, lens is that you have access to the Sony ecosystem, which is much more robust when it comes to wildlife and especially professional wildlife. You probably have noticed that I didn't mention the image quality in the comparison between the two lenses. And the reason is pretty simple. They're both outstanding. You can try to find a little bit of advantages here and there. I slightly prefer what I get out of the Fuji, probably because I'm used to it. I'm used to the Fujifilm color science. I'm used to the Fujifilm way of producing the image. But honestly, there's not an invisible difference when it comes to, to the image quality. Yes, of course, the bokeh, if you're shooting 400 millimeters on the Fuji and 600 on the Sony on full frame, you get, and also considering the difference of the aperture, you definitely get a better bokeh, a more uh, creamy bokeh out of the Sony, but that is function of the sensor size more than the lens. In similar condition, you basically get very similar results. When it comes to price, and this is the last thing, they're usually on the same level. Sometimes, most of the time, you can get the Sony at a cheaper price than the Fuji, but whenever Fuji does those big uh, uh, cashback, that's where the Fujifilm comes in cheaper than the Sony. However, we're not talking about huge differences. So again, price shouldn't be a big decision factor because you can basically find them at the same price range. So, in conclusion, the advantages going to the Fujifilm's way are more related to convenience. If you noticed about the things that I mentioned when it comes to the Fujifilm uh, system, it was size, weight, uh, convenience with the Arca Suisse, convenience with the uh, window on the, on the hood, and overall like usability of the lens. While on the other hand, the advantage of going Sony is more on the sheer performance, especially autofocus. Um, and if you give uh, a big importance to the full frame look, that is a huge advantage that uh, Sony has and you, you cannot go uh, full frame with Fuji. So that is something that you need to take in consideration. Either way, however, you cannot go wrong. You can achieve great results with both. As of today, if I needed to start from scratch and wildlife is my main thing, I would definitely go towards the Sony solution, although it's heavier and more difficult to use handheld, the Sony uh, lens is faster. The Sony's ecosystem is more geared toward uh, wildlife you get more options to grow with that system than you get out of Fuji. Now, Fuji is about to release the 500 mm f5.6, which gives you another option when it comes to wildlife, but still, the Sony system is much more established when it comes to um, wildlife for photography. However, that is taking in consideration that you're gonna pony up 
a lot of money if you want to grow in the Sony system because if you want to go towards a fast camera that is geared towards action, you got to spend a lot of money. If you want to get something better than the 200 to 600, you got to pony up a lot of money. Uh, with Fujifilm, you're more limited, but the best camera that you can get out of Fuji right now is the X-H2S, which costs pretty much less than the worst camera you can get from Sony. With, with Fuji, you definitely are going to spend way less money, partially because the system is more limited. So again, it's a give and take. On the other hand, if you are a Fujifilm shooter and you just want to try wildlife, wildlife is not your main thing. You like Fujifilm, you don't want to buy another camera, another system just to do wildlife, you can definitely purchase the 100 to the 150 to 600. That lens is going to give you a lot of great results. It's it's if if it's worked for me, it's going to work for you. Again, I'm not a big wildlife photographer, but still I would get results that I was pretty happy with. So, uh, you should choose based on 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 where you are with your system and how much important you give to shooting wildlife, because let's face it, these lenses are basically only for wildlife. You're not gonna shoot indoor sports with these lenses just because they're too dark for those, for that use case. So in conclusion, I hope you uh, liked this video. Let me remind you of the 70% discount that you have with, if you subscribe to audio. Uh, it's the music provider that I use for my all my videos since a while ago. Uh, the discount code and it's in, in, in the description, so go check that out. And the music that you've listened in the slideshow was coming from audio as well. Uh, thanks again to RCA Photo, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Ciao, and I'll see you in the next one.